Hi everyone, I'm Marius. I'm a PhD student in the lab of Fabian Theis in Munich. And I'll be talking today about cell rank for directed single cell fate mapping. The starting point for this talk is the classical concept of trajectory inference, where you use the asynchrony in biological processes to piece together continuous trends based on static snapshots as you get them in a single cell on a sequencing experiment. This works really well for normal development. Here's an example on the left, it's pancreatic development, where we know the process relatively well, we know where the initial and the terminal states are, and we can give these to the algorithm as a prior, and it then computes absolute time for us that basically allows us to study these continuous trends in the data. However, if you think of perturbed conditions like regeneration, cancer, and so on, this is much more difficult because it is often unclear where the initial and the terminal states are, and the directionality itself is often also unclear. So this is where Selring comes in. We wanted to combine these classical ideas of trajectory inference with some source of unbiased information of directionality. And for that, we turn to Arne Velocity, this concept by Lamano et al. from 2018, where they use the um, time delay between spliced and unspliced counts to compute something like the first derivative of gene expression, which gives you directionality in high dimensions. Um, this concept has been extended by Volker here on the right to also be applicable to transient systems, which is important for cell rank because it means we can really apply it to a, a wide um, range of biological systems. So say we have some data like this um, pancreas data here, um, we computed RNA velocity, we projected it into low dimensions. Now we are arguing that for detailed questions of trajectory inference, such as gene expression trends towards these terminal alpha, beta, and epsilon populations, um, and questions like how these delta cells have likely been generated, it's actually not enough to just look at the two-dimensional um, arrows, but it is better to study these trends directly in high dimensions because not enough of the biological variance is actually retained in such a low dimensional space. So this is the idea of cell rank, interpreting single cell vector fields directly in high dimensions to identify initial and terminal states and to assign each cell its fate probability. I wanna highlight two people involved here on the software side, uh, Mike and Philip. And I wanna point out that this is a collaboration with the lab done up here in New York. How do we do this? We um, adapted an algorithm called generalized per own cluster cluster analysis by Bernhard here on the top, which takes in the large cell cell transition matrix that we compute that we compute based on RNA velocity and it cores grain state matrix into the main set of macrostates. We then identify which ones of the macrostates are initial and terminal, and we compute fate probabilities towards the terminal macrostates. We validated this on in vitro data, this is data by Samantha Morris, where ground truth uh, in the form of lineage tracing is available. There are two outcomes for this process, either dead end or successful. If you just look at your low dimensional projection of velocity arrows, you don't see any route that leads towards the successful state because it is actually very rare. However, if you use cell rank to compute fate probabilities, you find the successful state and the fate probabilities towards this state correlate very well with ground truth. We then turn to an um, in vivo application, again, the pancreas. This was a collab with the lab of Heiko here. Um, we computed RNA velocities, macro states, and identified the initial and terminal states in the system. We were then able to compute the fate probabilities, which told us that the beta endpoint is the dominant state in the system, which makes sense biologically. And given the fate probabilities, we could then compute gene expression trends um, for the main driver genes in the system. We have another application in the paper, which is lung regeneration. So really taking trajectory inference to a perturbed setting. However, I'm not gonna go into any details on that. I do wanna mention though, that we've been working on a generalizing cell rank recently, so making it also applicable to settings where RNA velocity is not available by modularizing it into kernels and estimators. With that, I would like to close and thank everyone um, involved in this project. Thank you.